Hello, hello. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Happy we Wednesday. Are here for the, yeah, we are here for the reveal of Jarrett Ross. He's excited, can't you tell? <laughs> and here today, if you don't know who you're talking to, I'm Mindy. I'm a WikiTree team member staff, as is Aon and Julie. <laughs> And then Jarrett is our guest star that we're doing the reveal for. Yeah, I'm going to say it because Mindy won't say it for herself, but she just officially became a WikiTree team member in the last week. So we're very excited to have her on board. Happy to have her. <laughs> and then Julie, did you want to go ahead and tell everybody what the challenge is all about? I'd be glad to. So some of you that are here may not know what WikiTree is. So I'm going to give you a little overview of Wikitree and we'll talk about uh, what we do here. We, uh, we're basically a community of genealogists. We work together on a single family tree. In other words, when we, we collaborate to grow an accurate global tree that connects all of us. And the best part about Wikitree is that it's free. The Wikitree challenge that you're seeing our reveal for today is uh, our year long event and part of our year of accuracy where each week we bring together a team of wiki treeers and they take on a genealogy guest stars tree and collaborate to make it more accurate and more complete than anywhere else on the internet. So our goal is to improve our accuracy on wiki tree, add more family and connections and make more friends. So if you haven't subscribed yet to our channel, please take the time now to do so so that you can stay up to date on the channel challenge and you won't miss out on any of our video updates. We do a lot of them. Yes, we do. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you a little bit more about how the challenge works. We have the wiki tree challenge, like she said. We have uh, two ways to get points during that. There are the big points, bounty points, 10 points each for any brick wall ancestor or correcting a mistaken ancestor on the primary or the other person's tree. We also have individual points that people can get and that's for adding nuclear families. So siblings, children, and those points really do actually add up. And then while we're doing this, uh, we need to find ways to collaborate because that is a, a huge thing. And that's what Wikitree is all about anyways. But let me tell you how we do that. On the left-hand side, you'll see the spreadsheet. And we use that so that people, whether we have 25 people, 45 people, that's a lot of people working on a small amount of branches can go in and say, hey, I'm working on this profile. That way somebody doesn't come in and they don't lose their work. Now on the right hand side, you'll see the G2G posts. That's our genealogist to genealogist forum. And we go ahead and we post out a new post for each week. There's Jarrett's. And that way people can go and say, hey, I broke this brick wall or I have a question about this or, you know, can somebody look at this? And it's it's one of our ways to communicate. But now the biggest way is actually with Discord. And that is our live chat. So this is where we go in and we can say, hey, I need a translation on this. Or can somebody look at this? I need a second set of eyes. We have people that go ahead and look up obituaries, newspaper articles. We have people that just love to write biographies. So they go in and they do that. Other times we're just cheering each other on. It's good motivation. And now for this week, you'll see this is what our top five wound up as. And our most valuable player, MVP, Ave yeah. Van Hout, yay, yay, has worked so hard at yay. all of these people. Uh, we have her in first place. We have Maddie Hardman in second. Jamie Arrington was in third. And you know what? At the last minute, I crept up to fourth and didn't even realize I was on the score sheet. So I apologize, people. <laughs> I got caught up. And then in fifth place, of course, Isabel Martin. But we had other people that were just as equally hard this week. Yeah. Do we and know? They, they all deserve a hand. I was going to say, do Yay. we know who number six is? Just so we know who you bumped. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Let me look because it changed earlier. It was Donna, and actually Donna Bowman was our our top player last week, and she was um, she was really high up in the score until that last bit, and she wasn't able to get on and make points today. So, yeah. So I said, where can I help? And they said, go there. And I accidentally made points. That was, that was That's all right. It. But everybody once again did really well. And, you know, as, yeah, as Jarrett knows, your tree challenged us. Your branches were incredibly difficult and your brick walls were actually really solid brick walls. Now, everybody, including Jarrett, you guys, if you're researching of any kind or doing other things, it's so hard to get back to your own research. So, you know, we know there are things that he would have found on his own had he had the chance. But, you know, here we were and we were offering it up. So let's go ahead and take a look at a few things that we found. Now, this one on the David Goldberg line, we had and this is speculation. But one of the team members spent an immense amount of time analyzing this line and said that he thinks that Shlomo Zalman Goldberg is not the father of David Goldberg, but is his uncle. Mm -hmm. And he left quite, uh, quite a few research notes too, Jared, so you can check those out. And okay. then the other thing that was different on that one is that um, David's mother turned out to be a Bertha, not a Malka, which was on the primary tree that we were looking at. But he did do a lot of work, you know, looking through the tombstones and stuff that were in the cemeteries. And for those things, it's really nice to have people that are knowledgeable about the headstones and what they say, because I had no clue, you know, <laughs> but but we have people that do. And so hopefully his notes on that will help you the next time you get to go back in and research that particular person. Uh, beautiful right. work on the project. He wrote a whole catalog for you here of his thoughts. Yeah, about he, the, he wrote yeah. a book for you. <laughs> I see he's going into it. So, yeah, that's going to be great to go into. Yeah, and that is one of the, the nice things that, that Wikitree has is we have that beautiful white space. You know, we can write that narrative, bring them back to life. We can put the stickers up to show you, you know, a little pop of information, what they're notable for, if they migrated. And then we have that space to put those research notes. So even if you don't get back to it for six months, you can go back at six months and go, oh, that's right. Lewis wrote this about it. And this is what I wanted to look into. So I just love that about the notes. Awesome. Okay, and we're going to hit on our next one. <laughs> and you'll see pretty soon why I find this humorous. But okay. we didn't find anything on the Rosenberg line, so we kind of hijacked this slide. <laughs> okay. Laura, Laura and I hijacked it. Um, but the parents, and this actually was late breaking news. This just got done not too long ago. The parents of Rafael Montezino were found to be Moses Montezino de Mesquita, which was interesting change. And Reina, the Uziel Cardoso. Yep. And I know you have the two um, Montezino lines on there. So yeah. yeah, I think there's a Levi Montezinos. Right. And you have, um, yeah, the one that's Reina's and the one that's, uh, what's her name? <laughs> I'm going to draw a blank on it. At any rate, I know you have the two, but only one of the lines wound up with the um, with the mosquito at the end of it, so it'd be interesting to see if we wind up with you know a, a common ancestor on those two separate lines. But it was fine to fun to you know actually have some brick walls go down. Oh yeah. Okay. And for the next one, we have the pearl waxman line. Now oh, I know. Right. Yeah, the migrating ones. And this this spurred a lot of conversation over whether the name was Waxer or Waxman or, and actually, if you look on um, like JRRI Poland site, it's Voxman. So, I mean, there's, there's different spellings for it. But here yeah. we were looking at how Isaac and his wife, Sore, and their three children, Pearl, Iredale, and David, were detained for 10 days, and I don't know if you know this, but it was said that he had poor physical health, even though his health was fine. So, yeah. And what the team kind of decided was that most likely because of his age, I believe he was in his 50s, they went, oh, I wonder if he's going to be able to work and support his family here. Yeah. And so they, yeah, marked him down 
as not quite physically able. And he was released um, after it was appealed. But by that time, the Shores, which was the family that was coming to get them, you know, and take them in and help them get settled, had already come. And they said, oh, no, sorry, we can't let him go with you. So, yeah. What? Something I really amazing I have to say is just the other day with the family tree DNA update, it made a match that I hadn't looked at before stand out. And that match is a great granddaughter of Katie Shore. Oh, wow. wow. How yeah, interesting so, yeah. is that? Yeah, and it turned she she didn't know anything about her family. So now she's learning even more because I told her I didn't I actually hadn't found the migration on my line or hers. So I didn't oh, have wow. any, any of that. See, now you have a story to share. Yeah. They, were they were detained for 10 days before they were allowed to go with the Shores. So, I mean, the, the Shores must have been pretty important in their life. It, it was just fun to find out that little bit of information. Wow. Okay, and next we have Brick Wall Alert. We have Isaac Lopez Diaz's father. You knew that was Shlomo Lopez Diaz, but the mother's name was unknown when we started working on the branches. And it turned out that the father married a Judith Moran, so a Judith, not an Abigail, in 1758 in Bayonne, France. So there is actually right. the, the marriage record there that you'll get to look at. And that gave us a, a better name for the mom, which was fun. Nice. Another one on the Nunez Vaz line. Okay, and this yeah. was really what, yeah, this was one of the more active lines for us. And Raina Montezino's father was known to be Rafael Montezino's. But here again, we didn't have a maiden name for the mother. And it's so hard to find the documents sometimes that have them. But the mother's name was Hannah Ramos. Yeah. So we had a name for that. We were able to take that line back further. It was very, very exciting. And most of these, I'll tell you, most of these brick walls honestly came later in the week. It took a lot of research and there was just some incredible collaboration going on while people, you know, got in groups and just tore the records apart. Everybody pulled up their own <laughs> sources and, you know, tried to find this stuff. It was it was crazy. Okay, and this one, also on the Morris Nunez Foss line. And, you know, I do promise we looked at other lines, but honestly, we just kept coming back to these ones. No, it, it, I, it all makes sense. I totally understand. There's a lot there. Yeah. Now, this one was your actually third cousin, twice removed, but Abraham Bueno de Mesquita is a well-known comedian and actor. So he performed in the 60s, 70s, and 80s in the Netherlands and Germany. He was also a Holocaust survivor. Um, yeah. When Isaac Nunez Vaz was born in 1869, and this is the document on the right, his father went to the registry office but refused to sign because of his religion. And the two Jewish witnesses did the same. It wasn't Shabbat. The only reason that we could think of is maybe it was the last day of the Rosh Hashanah, the new Jewish New Year. It's, it's, it's possible. Interesting. I actually am in touch with cousins from this line, and one of them I just saw posted, Robert Walsh. Um, he he's in the chat and he descends from the uh, Bueno de Mesquita line of the Nunez Vaz family. Oh, wow. So yeah, if you find anything else out about that, you'll have to throw that ba information back at us. Cause you know, we, it was all speculation on our part, but it was interesting that yeah. the document noted that, you know, that they were unable to sign. They were there. They just weren't <laughs> allowed to sign it because of religion. Yeah, that's interesting. I've never seen that before um, because I know about in, in Amsterdam, the civil registers began in 1811. And this I can I already can tell this is one of the civil registers where there's four on each page. And <laughs> I've seen yeah. it before, but I haven't seen this one. So this is great. Yeah, I've it's, never it's seen been, that before. In one of these. been a lot of fun. OK, so another one. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you guys found this. Now, now, you know why I was laughing earlier, though, because they're almost all on the unions. So that, that was a busy family. <laughs> they had good yeah. records. We found good stuff on them. This one was really kind of cool, though. This was um, Yap Nunez Boz, and he was your second cousin. He was a resistance man during World War II. He was a founder and later an editor of a covert newspaper. And I'm not sure how you say that. Just het parole. I, I um, think I always call it het parole. 
but I, I, <laughs> I, I don't know if Am the Dutch give that huh to it. So it's probably more het parole. But well, yeah. <laughs> I'll take I'll take your word for it. At any rate, he was a founder and an editor of that paper. And in 1942, unfortunately, they found him in his hiding place in um, Wajan Injun. I'm going to just slaughter these places. I don't know. But he did go to, on to the famous Orange Hotel prison and he went yeah. via the camp Westerbork to Sobibor and unfortunately was killed on the 13th of March in 1943. They did name a street in Amsterdam, so you know he he was well known, and he made his his presence felt before he went. But those stories are are sad to see. Yeah, they're they're. I'm sure a lot of people realize very quickly there were a lot of relatives of mine who were murdered in the Holocaust. Many at Sobibor and, and Auschwitz. Yeah. Okay, now this one is not a cousin, but let me tell you, the team tried so hard to connect to him this week, and that was Samuel Sarfati. So that was like a big focus, and a lot of people put a lot of time into it. Now, they did get you close enough to be 12 little steps away from them. And, you know, the more cousins, families that you fill out, these nuclear relatives, uh, the the closer you can sometimes be. So you may wind up being closer than 12 steps or you may find a, a relation later on. But for right now, this is what they can find. And for people that don't know, this was a doctor and health advisor for the city of Amsterdam and just hugely, hugely important. Um, he was the main reason that children's deaths uh, dropped so rapidly in the 19th century. And he organized a garbage cleaning service, a bread factory, much more. You know, um, back before he started making his, his um, information known, the water that they drank out of was the same water that their sewer went into was the same water that they dumped their trash in. So, you know, and then not only that, but he was a big proponent of hand washing, which we know now is important, you know, but back then they really didn't. And so uh, that just shows you, and, and you, you'll get to see this a little bit closer, you know, after this is all over, but that shows you how to get from you to him. Awesome. I saw that his mother was a Musafia and I did, I know I descend from the Musafia and I, I think I descend from the Sarfati line too, somewhat distantly. So I'm sure he's some sort of cousin of mine in some way. Yeah. Like I said, I think as those branches continue to fill out, uh, you'll find that connection. Yeah. Now this one here is where you were talking about. Oops. Thank you. I didn't have it all the way up where I could see it. The, the Holocaust was, you know, and of course that's tragic and everybody knows, but, yeah. but, you know, there's no way of getting around it. it. It's just part of what was there as history. And one of our um, team members, Maddie spent countless hours going through and she put over a hundred Nunez boss, just that name into the, um, that were in the concentration or the extermination camps into a category. So if you haven't figured out how to look at categories on Wiki Tree yet, you'll want to do that. And you'll see everybody that's in that category. But she personally put in over a hundred people, you know, and just she was really, really humbled by it and said it just really put life into perspective. Wow. Yeah. yeah, it's um it's actually a focus of mine when I did my research on this Dutch line of mine. And I ended up making a graph out of it because I've I've found over 4,000 descendants of uh, the oldest Jake uh, Nunes Vaz I had in Amsterdam. And of those 4,000, 1,000 of them were murdered in the Holocaust. Um, but that would be beyond just those that had the Nunes Vaz name, but all of those that descended from him. And I created a graph um, that I share every once in a while. Um, after Laura Diamond gave me the idea, she did the same thing for her family, um, and it really it, it, it's quite tragic how how massive it really was. Yeah. yeah, it really is. Okay, and next, and this was something also you know that just kind of got. Um, added in at the end you know but while looking at the records we try and find the interesting stories and sometimes we find the stories first and we find the person it belongs to later <laughs> so this one wound up being another cousin of yours and you know it's great and once again in, in discord and i had started working on something and found some information 
And then I had to go off to do something else. And I said, hey, does anybody know if this line is going to connect with those other Montezinos? And somebody jumped right on it. And they were like, I don't know, let me find out. And they started building it back and they did find the connection. Uh, so on the left hand side is where they descend. And on the right hand side, there's their, your matching ancestors in the green box. That's who you come down from. And what was interesting is that they were somebody that were later really, really well known for their um, their chips and their ice cream sales at the open market in Amsterdam. And I got a whole little mini lesson, which was cool, like on how they flea markets out there. And somebody showed me pictures of some people just laid stuff out on the ground. You know, it wasn't even in a, you know, in an official booth or anything. And so I guess at that time they caught him selling a legal goods that didn't belong to him so some <laughs> stolen items wow. and they had the jail had gotten full so they locked him up with several other people just in the police station because they didn't know what to do with them so they had to just lock the doors to the police station so um one of them was uh, there was a mr kuiper that they got for stealing a Mr. Coton because of embezzlement, and then of course Mr. Montezino, Rafael Montezino, for selling stolen stuff. Wow, so, <laughs> that's that cool. Just, story. Yeah, wasn't it? And so you'll have the link to that on the profile to the actual, you know, where the police report is of the people that were arrested that day. It was kind of fun. Now this one is one where they found some inconsistencies and they were really hoping to get all of this solved on the Jenny Epstein line and unfortunately couldn't. Um, the parents' names, it was the father's name that was, that was a difficulty. And they were really hoping to find gravestones that would give a little bit more, but because some of the names are so common there, you know, they couldn't definitely nail it down to one thing or another. Now, one of the things that was pointed out, you know, was the Ashkenazi uh, Jews not naming their children yeah. after live people. And so Meyer couldn't be a son of a Meyer. And I, I mean, you'd be the, the one that knows about this. I mean, I've read that the practice of using a deceased member's name does hold true in a lot of places, but there are places where the Sephardic Jews do choose to name their children after living relatives. So yeah, Sephardic Jews uh, had different naming customs, especially in the different communities that they had, um, especially when it comes to surnames. So like in Amsterdam, it makes it easy because a Nunes Vaz will, their children will be Nunes Vaz and their kids will be Nunes Vaz. But if they were in the Jamaican community, Nunes Vaz marries uh, Madison Capriles and then the kids are Vaz Capriles instead of Nunes Vaz. Um, but then for the, for the, first names they um it'll be um at least in amsterdam the first son will be named after the father's father the first daughter mm -hmm. yeah but with ashkenazi the custom is usually to not name it after a someone who is deceased um but it is possible that his father died before he was born um that was kind of the thought that i always had was maybe his father died when he before he was born and that's why he would have been named meyer but yeah that's a it's a very good point to to have there definitely been a learning experience i learn something new every week while we're doing this yeah <laughs> Somebody right. else spent some time working on the Alliance Colony, and I don't know how much you've looked at, at that. Oh, um, <laughs> I've been to Alliance many times. Oh, well, that's good. See, you can tell us all about it. For people that don't know, many families had recently fled Russia, and some of those stopping in New York first lived in crowded areas. The community at the Alliance Colony thrived for several decades, but a bit eventually diminished as people moved on, and it was hard to make a living there. But Jacob and Rebecca Ekoff, with their son Marcus, were listed among the first settlers. So somebody has made a space page on that, and you'll get a link to that too, so you can see the work she did. I was nice. hoping someone would make a space page on this topic. That's awesome. I actually I host a Facebook page on uh, the Alliance Colony for Descendants. We have over 400 people in the group, and we had an Alliance Colony Descendant reunion a few years ago, and over 600 people attended. Wow. So I actually, I'm, wow. I, I got records from people who descend from those in this list. I know, I, 
out of the majority of this list of the, it shows 44, the numbers you change kind of around. You probably saw a few numbers, but I know descendants of almost the majority of the families. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. That's a great so, piece of history. That is very to, cool. Yeah. yeah and be you, in touch with. And I like, I like how they're sourcing Jana Persky's website because she's done a lot of research on this too, on the Lions Colony. Well, and when you get a hold of all this, Jarrett, you can come back and flesh out this space page even more and add to what's here if you have additional information that would make it helpful. And, and share it with your Facebook group. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and one of the other things that we did try and do, you know, because you had mentioned that you had so many little breadcrumbs out there, little videos and, you know, your your regular blogs and different things to look at. So we did try and reference those um, as we could, or at least mark them as a citation on the profile, because we want everything to be as complete as possible and accurate. So that way, you know, if you did a video on it, people should know you did a video on it, and that link should be on the profile. We tried. Awesome. <laughs> Now here on the ECOF line, um, you know Jacob, he was your great grandfather. He was a farmer in that Alliance colony. He yep. registered for the draft, but had an unstable heart. He married Mary Casino and started working with his cousins, the Mills brother. And you probably know this too. He was a sales manager for 30 years. He moved to New York to be closer to the company. But one of our other team members really got excited about this. And she actually started a space page just about music of the times. And so, um, you know, he is featured on that page as other people, as she finds other people that were relevant during that era, she's going to add them, but he will remain an integral part of that space. So wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. And those music is such an uh, amazing story, especially because so much of the music today and what's developed came out of what they were doing. So, I mean, you can see a lot of the names like Louis Armstrong, but they did stuff like Dizzy Gillespie, Cap Calloway was one of their big ones in the beginning. Um, and their biggest one was Duke Ellington. That was kind of like oh, the wow. first to really help them get out. So, but they did a lot of stuff. And then actually on this line, I hope I'm not jumping ahead and doing something you're going to say, but a cousin of mine from this line, he's the one who brought the rights of the chicken dance to the United States. Oh. So you can thank the Mills family oh. for the chicken dance. Not that my girls and I have ever done the chicken dance time and time again. But <laughs> yes, I can almost guarantee have. some of, someone out there is now Googling Mills chicken dance. Um, and they're going to find some articles um, about um, my cousin Stanley Mills. Oh, that is so awesome. Oh, that's, that's hilarious. <laughs> okay, and this we're we're just looking at um, more conversation going on. You know, looking at the Portuguese Israelite synagogue in Amsterdam and pictures there. It's just a beautiful place. And I tell you, you know, I was just waiting with bated breath for somebody to finally link up to one of your Portuguese ancestors. And we just could not get over those Netherlands walls. We just couldn't. I mean, I was tempted to kind of go around one and, you know, <laughs> research anyways. But if, but if you can't get the line solid and make sure you have the location, you know, um, yeah. And the names were so difficult too, because they had aliases and nicknames and, you right. know, in Portugal, they were one name because they were, you know, pretending to be Christian and then, yeah. So, but Esnoga, uh, which is what the synagogue is called. I, I, it's one of the things that when I finally go to Europe, I have to go there. I have to go to Amsterdam and see Esnoga. Yeah. Uh -huh. It just absolutely looks beautiful. And once you get past the rest of those brick walls, you know where to find me. I'm with you, Trina, because we're going to do some of them Portuguese people. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Here we're showing the, the brick wall chart, and I almost didn't with you, but I'm going to anyways. You'll get a full-size copy of this. Everywhere okay. where the yellow is is where, of course, there was an available brick wall when we started, and that's what I use for my tracking. And, of course, on yours, it's just so close up. You know, um, some people, it's, some of the guests, it's really far out. Some, it's staggered. A lot of yours is really close just because those records, as you know, are just so difficult to find and, yeah. you know, uh, determine 
Yeah. So we did have one little spot there where you can see the pop out and the little bees are where we broke brick walls. So you'll get that. So you, so you can see where your brick walls were, but they, they really were clustered in that same area that you've already found some amount of research on. Um, we just hope that we're bringing you enough new information and other names and really good trails to future research. Wonderful. So how do you think we did? Did we at least meet what your expectations might have been during the week? I mean, I'm I'm pretty excited. I was I was very hopeful that some brick walls would break down, but I know how difficult it is because you're going up against some really solid brick walls on, on my tree. Um, just you know, dealing with Jewish records, you have the difficulties of the language changes and the name changes, but then you also have the difficulty of those records just not being readily available and searchable. Um, so, I mean, I'm I'm absolutely excited. I was very happy to see that it looks like someone found the migration records for the Waxman family, which I was very uh, uh, surprised to see. I did see in one of the conversations, someone also found the birth for Abraham Nunes Vaz, which I had mentioned before. I wasn't quite sure if it was in London or Amsterdam, and I'd never found it in the GRO records, and I saw someone found it. And I think what threw me off was the Robles name was spelled R-O-O-B-L-A-S from what I just saw in your little presentation. So it was yeah. like, you know, I'm, I'm super excited because I'm sure there's going to be a lot of stuff that I didn't find before that will just, you know, it's going to give me that boost. So Yeah. And sometimes that's, you know, like I said before, sometimes that's what just that is a benefit. You know, we've got five different people that can look at a record and go, oh, we're all going to search now, you know. Yeah. And so we everybody gets their own resource, the site that they like. Everybody spells it a little bit different to see if they can come up with something surprising. And, you know, we do put the links to the actual documents where they're available on the on your branches on the profiles for you so as you flip through to see what we've learned and look for that new information you'll get surprises like that really cool um, you know actual images of the records awesome does anybody have questions yeah, i'm kind of i'm reading through some of the comments there I do was see one. oh go ahead I was going to say, I saw uh, it was mentioned that there's just so much in the Amsterdam archives that there's no time to go through it. And I agree, you could probably spend months going through the Amsterdam archives, just going through inventory 334 for the Portuguese community, the Portuguese Jewish community is a, a task upon itself. But then once you get to the uh, the notorial records in the Amsterdam archives, plus the ketubas and then the civil registers, and then all of the other fun little stuff that they have hidden there, um, because in the Amsterdam archives, they have digitized letter correspondences be between random people in the 1700s and it's just like there's so, so many cool. crazy little things hiding in there so i totally understand where they're coming from and that was i was dropping little hints every now and again in different places like hey have you found this <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Trust me, those all those all went into Discord. <laughs> yeah. Somebody go, oh, he just tweeted again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I was messaging, uh, I was messaging Laura a couple of times with different things, like, oh, I forgot about this family story. Let everybody know. Yeah. I did see Karen Sorry. asked if any of your Portugal Amsterdam folks went to the Caribbean. Yes. So actually for the Nunes Vaz family, one of the biggest things that I've focused on in researching that is DNA. And there are four branches of the Nunes Vaz family. There's the Amsterdam branch, which everyone's been researching, the Livorno branch, which the Amsterdam branch traces back to Livorno, but we haven't connected them confidently yet. And then there's the Jamaican branch, and then there's the Suriname branch. And we've proven with descendants using Y-DNA that the Jamaican branches and the Dutch branches are definitely the same family. Oh, cool. Um, and then we're trying to do that with the Italian branch and hopefully the Suriname, the Suriname branch. Um, but a lot of the members that were in uh, Jamaica, they went over to Curacao. Um, some of them actually went to Venezuela where a few of them still live. And I'm in, I'm in touch with cousins from all of these branches too. So it's like, I don't That's know. I love this cool. stuff, but yeah, it's, um, it's uh, we have a lot of family that went to the different uh, areas in in the Caribbean. 
very cool. Yeah, yeah I see it, Chris asking oh, Italian hope... branch, A, eh? And yes, in <laughs> Livorno. And if you yeah. actually look in Livorno, so they spell it Nunes Vise, N-U-N-E-S-V-A-I-S. Oh. And in Ferenz, there's a Villa Nunes Vaz, which is uh, connected to Mario Nunes Vaz, who is the famous painter. So Chris, take a look at the Nunes Vaz family in Italy, and I'm sure you will like, you'll be surprised how much Italian family I have out there. You have a lot of notables in your family, Jarrett. <laughs> I was wondering what stories are they going to choose because I have just just looking at my ancestors. I they did so many amazing things. You know, the Mills side with the music, but then also yeah. I have a lot of cousins in film, or my ancestors were in film and their own theaters. And my on my dad's side, my great grandfather owned the Ross House in Germantown, which is now the Commodore Berry Club for anyone who's in Philadelphia. Um, so <laughs> yeah, there's so many stories. And then getting into my cousins, oh my gosh, I actually want to do a series called uh, My Cousins Are Cooler Than Yours. And each <laughs> post would be about one of That's my cousins awesome. and how I'm related. And I mean, I could do that for so many different things. It's, That's awesome. Yeah. So I see some, I see Thomas asked a question between the newest Faz, Amsterdam families and the Mendez Monsanto families. I don't know of one. It's certainly possible, though. Um, Sounds like a potential rabbit hole to me. Yeah. Yeah. For yeah, somebody. So, yeah, there's um, what you can do is there's actually the Andatra registers in Amsterdam. And if there was a marriage between a Nunes Vaz and a Mendez Monsanto, you might be able to find that or in the uh, Beth Hyam records. Uh, which I actually linked just a few days ago. That was my the tweet that said, you know, surprise inside. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and those have been great. And I found a couple of uh, sites that have those. And once again, I tell you, we've learned so much. And those of us that never, ever researched uh, Netherlands before, we're learning all about the different sites and we're getting all kinds of practice. So it's been a lot Very of fun. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, and I their thought records the, are it's... so good. Say that again? Their records are so good there. Oh my gosh. Plus the, the law is that they have to, any government records that are digitized and available have to be available for free. They can't charge oh. for it. Very cool. So I'm not even, yeah. I, I don't know the name of the law, but I know the translation is the law of reuse of government information or something like that. Oh. Pretty cool. Yeah. Wow, we're all a little jealous over here in the United yeah, States. Yeah, we are. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure all those are already on the Dutch um, on, on the Dutch part of the tree on Wiki Tree already know all of that. Um, yes. But I'm sure this was a very nice change because the Portuguese records in Amsterdam are just a little different, but they still kind of overlap the same with typical Dutch records. So, oh, Melanie worked on my tree. Yes, yes she oh, did. Great. She did. <laughs> that's Melanie awesome. was awesome. Oh, that's great. I, I've, I've, met, I've hung out with Melanie at Roots Tech a couple of times. So next gen. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. I love it. Yeah, we've got, we've got a well, couple of future guests that have joined in on the fun so far. Nice. Yeah, they're awesome. So if anybody doesn't have any, excuse me, let me start that over again. If nobody <laughs> has any other questions for Jarrett. We have another guest showing up next week that we'd like to introduce to you. His name's John Bourne. John is a full-time professional genealogist and founder of the Dutch company Antecedentia. He holds degrees in archival studies from the Hague Law, excuse me, the Hague School for Archivists, and the con and he has a degree in constitutional law and history from Tilburg University. Um, he became a full-time genealogist and before that he worked as the manager of the services and education department at the Tilburg Archives. He frequently lectures on genealogical methods and focuses on Dutch records and then he teaches courses in genealogy as well. And we have a video from John since he couldn't be here this evening and we'll let him tell you a little bit more about himself. Hi there, this is John from the Netherlands. 
I'm so excited and honored to be this week's guest in the WikiTree Challenge. Please forgive me that I'm not here for the live kickoff. It's 2 a.m. in the Netherlands and I'm in my bed asleep. You signed up for working on my family tree. I started with my family history in 1988 at the age of 14. My grandfather's youngest brother was showing me a piece of paper with the names of his parents, aunts and uncles. And from that moment on, I really wanted to know more about my own family. One of the brick walls that I've been facing for the last 20 years uh, is the first Boeren family that lived in Meerle, a small place in the northern part of Belgium. This is where Jacob Hendricks, um, patronymics, no surname, and his wife Jenneke lived. They were both buried in the local church, one in 1687 and one in 1688. Their grave still exists. They had three sons, born in 1660, 62, and 64. But I never found their marriage records, and therefore I have no idea where they were born or who, who their parents were. During the search for my ancestors, one of them drew my attention, Maarten van Leeuwen. He was born in 1794 and died in 1889. Yes, 94 years old. He fought in the Battle of Waterloo in 1815, and fortunately he survived, because otherwise I would not have been here. Twice he saved a church from burning down. The first time was in 1817 in Belgium, and the second time was in 1859 in his own hometown, Lone of Sand. For his heroic achievements, he received three medals from the Dutch king. One of the lines that I would like to know more about is the Heffels family. Anna Maria Heffels was the mother of my great-grandfather, whose portrait you see behind me on the wall. I know her grandfather was a Henricus Heffels, who was born in 1766 and died in 1807. I know very little about this family who lived, as far as I know, in Utrecht. Another blind spot is the Knaap or Knaup family. I'm a descendant of Johann Georg Knaup, which sounds very German, but he was supposedly born in Namur, Belgium, in the 1770s. He died in Sertogenbosch in 1833 and married a Johanna Semmeling, who came from Maastricht. More information about the Knaup or the Semmeling family would be a perfect gift. I never published a lot of my family history online. There is only a small portion of my pedigree on Wikitree. This indicates that I have not used Wikitree a lot. Sorry, guys. But this also means that you get the opportunity to add a lot of new details. Good luck to all of you who are, who are participating. Enjoy this challenge and see you all next week. Bye. Bye. That was great. I know. It was. I know there are it's gonna be an interesting already... week again people that are already excited to um to be starting this and oh, melanie says john is super kind he's very active on twitter he is a very nice man wonderful that we find a lot of great things for him and sure. everybody stay tuned for next week where we'll be introducing lewis kessler I want to thank everybody for um, the participants for doing all the hard work that you did. Yay, big hand Yay. up. Thank Jarrett for uh, letting us work on his branches and being here tonight. And my just pleasure. Being so excited. Absolutely, my <laughs> pleasure. Thank you. Thank you to everybody who. Uh, who worked on the tree in some way, um, you know, writing stories, finding records, putting in pictures, all that stuff. I really appreciate it. 
Did you see that, Jared? Oh, Melanie, Melanie, Melanie's you to recruiting you. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had more time. I wish I had more time. So, but may, I don't know. Maybe, maybe one, uh, maybe one of these weeks, I'll be able to take some time off. Well, we'd love in. to have you if you can. <laughs> every little bit helps. You know, you don't have to be there full time. Every little bit helps. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, for all our viewers out there, you can check us out on wikitree.com. Subscribe to get alerts. And we'll say good night for the evening. Good night, everybody. Oh, night. Friday, J.